I've been keeping ants as pets for over six years now, walking around parks and causing suspicious activity until recently when I found out about ants being sold online. Buckeye Myrmecology was kind enough to send me some for this video, so let's see what's in store for us today. Alright, so we just got the package. Yo, look at this. Ender ants. That's crazy. That's crazy. It says a lot of ants on the front. And yeah, let's go ahead and open this thing. As usual, we got our trusty scissors in hand. Yo, my main worry is just if they didn't arrive alive. But hey, gotta have hope. Gotta have hope with this. So this has actually been in the works for a couple months. So I'm super glad that I finally have them in hand. Oh, okay, we got a cold pack. All right. Oh, and this must be the, oh well. I've never seen one of these before. <laughs> I'm more interested in this thing than the ants. All right, so right here we have the permit information and also the instructions for properly disposing of ants. These organisms are subject to the permit conditions included in this order and must not be released into the environment for any reason. Doing so is in violation of said permit and has the potential to cause agricultural or environmental harm. Number two, these organisms cannot under any, these organisms cannot under any, or, yo, I keep on messing up and I'm just reading. These organisms cannot under any circumstance be sold or distributed any further. They may not be resold to anyone. And number three, in the case of colony death or other happenings, these organisms must go through one of the four following methods prior to disposal in the trash. There's even four different ways to to dispose of these guys. They can be placed into plastic bags and frozen for eight hours. They can be placed into plastic bags and immersed in 10% Clorox solution for eight hours. They can be placed into plastic bags and immersed in rubbing alcohol for one hour. And they can be placed into plastic bags and microwave for one minute. Yeah, here in the USA, there's a lot of strict laws on keeping ants of different states. We have to go ahead and finally get these guys out of their, out of their box. <sighs> oh man. Oh man, look at all these. I always forget what these are called. <laughs> Popcorn kernels, styrofoam, styrofoam peanuts. Yo, I finally got it. Styrofoam peanuts, that's what they're called. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. What is this? I think this is one of the colonies. They're in a plastic bag. Oh, they're, oh, it's both colonies. Look at that, they're wrapped in a, I already forgot what this is called. What is this? Uh, uh, toilet paper? Not toilet paper, no. Nah. Wow, my mind is really going blank. I just gotta make sure this thing is empty though. I don't wanna make a mess. Okay, yeah. Now I gotta put them all back in here. Boom, magic. Okay, let's go ahead and finally open this package. Buckeye Myrmecology. Artisan ant nests inspired by nature. So they also sell ant nests besides the ants. But okay, we're gonna go ahead and open this. There's some tape on the side. Alright, moment of truth. I don't even know which colony this is. Moment of truth. I'm kind of, I'm kind of nervous. Okay, I'm still feeling paper towels. Oh, we got the water. There's still water in here. Yo, check it, check it. So we have one queen right here. We gotta get a closer look later. Yo, that's, that's nice. That's nice. Finally got Lacey is back on the channel. So this queen is known as Laceus americanus, also known as the woodland fuzzy ant, and their nests are usually found in the soil, under rotten logs stones, and trees. I don't think they sting or bite, and they seem to be fairly easy to keep. This queen only has some cocoons, but hopefully they're going to hatch soon. I'm just gonna put her underneath the desk right now. <laughs> so the next colony should be the... Actually, I'll save it until, until after you guys see it. <sighs> Moment of truth again. These ants? I'm surprised I've never found these ants. One of the most common ants that people keep. I'm just excited that I finally have them just cause for me, I never look for queen ants during the daytime. And these are one of those ants that fly during the mornings. Yo, there they are. Okay, I think the queen is okay. I think the queen is okay, but I'm not really sure. She's like right there. She's like right there huddled. I think she's just shocked from the, from the shipping, but there's a couple workers in here too. So these are just pavement ants. Finally, finally got them. Always gotta have this, some tin foil. But okay, let's go ahead and put on this honey. So drop a dribble. A droplet. I don't want any of the workers to drown. These are my first Tetramorium ants. I think that's good. I think that's good. Yeah, I don't think these ants can sting or bite you. Pavement ant bite test? Pavement ants versus my hand? Okay, there we go. I gotta wash my hands though, cause this honey is, it's like sticking to my hand. BRB, watch the ants for me. Actually, I'll just turn off the light. And the second colony are called Tetramorium immigrants, also known as pavement ants. These ants are also very easy to keep and should be fast growing. I counted about 9 workers and some eggs. Most likely, I'll be moving them into a tubs and tube setup. And lastly, I also asked Buckeye Myrmecology some questions about their store. This is what they had to say. And so for my first question, I asked him why he started ant keeping and why he started Buckeye Myrmecology. 
I got the push to keep ants the same way as I think most western ant keepers do by watching Ants Canada videos on YouTube. However, I already had a large interest in animals and nature, and when I was little I also had one of those more classic style Uncle Milton ant farms. At least, until it fell over one day and the ants went everywhere. I originally started Buckeye Myrmecology to help make the nests that I wanted to buy more available for US ant keepers, since at the time there were very few US made nests, and none in the styles that I liked the most. For the second question, I asked him what his goal was with Buckeye Myrmecology, any future plans for the website, and if he ever saw himself opening up a physical store, pop-up shop, or attending reptile expos. He said most of his motivation has been to help people start keeping ants for the first time and also spreading the hobby. He says to people who don't already keep ants, they are very underappreciated creatures. And to that, I can really agree. Before I kept ants, I would just look at every single ant the same, but after learning more about ants and keeping them for myself, I just realized there are so many different kinds and all of them are unique in their own way. He says at some point he'd definitely open a physical storefront, but he thinks he's still very far away from that moment but sooner he'll be looking into having a table at Reptile Expos and similar events. Then I also asked him what was the process like for receiving permits, how easy it was obtaining them, and where people should be informed of laws for shipping queen ants. He says that it's actually very easy, and if a species is already established in your state, then you can apply for a PPQ 526 permit, and then you should gain approval within a month or two. But for ants that you can't keep in your state, he says it will be more difficult. He also has a page on his website dedicated to permits if anyone's interested. And even the USDA has a specific page for ant keeping. He says they're not here to stop us from keeping ants, they just want to make sure that we, both as ant keepers and responsible citizens, do our due diligence to prevent the ants we keep from escaping into the environment, because they could spread diseases or be harmful to the environment around them. And then for my last question I asked him, can you see the ant community becoming larger than the tarantula niche, and if not, how long do you think it will be until the hobby grows to that level? This is what he had to say. While I've been involved in the ant keeping community for over 5 years now, I'm not very familiar with other forms of insects and invertebrates, or their respective communities. I do know that the tarantula, isopod hobbies, etc are much larger and older than ant keeping. Ant keeping is growing fast, but I can't predict whether it will reach or overtake the level of other invertebrate pet keeping niches. I do think ants may have an advantage over tarantulas though. It was hard enough for me to convince my parents to let me keep an ant in the house when I first started. I can't imagine asking them for a tarantula. Of course, you can also find Buckeye Myrmecology's Instagram, YouTube, website, and Facebook in the description. Also, I got you guys a 10% off discount if you want to purchase a queen ant if you use Ender 10. It will only apply to these species, but hopefully that will change in the future. And special thanks to Medical Carcass 9 and K Carbray 23 for supporting the channel. If you want exclusive access to behind the scenes, scripts, current videos that I'm working on, future projects, and a load of other benefits that I haven't mentioned, or if you just want to support the channel, you can support me on my Patreon. If not, you can also join the Discord server, where I check in at least once a day answering your guys' questions. My name is Enderance, another fellow ant YouTuber, and I'll see you all soon, my friends. <laughs>